The goal is very simple, to find the best watch collection in New York City. Boom, watch fan. Uh, Christian? Yes. You alright? Yes. What's on the, what's on the wrist today? It's the difference. <laughs> Thinking about Dogecoin, I'm very busy. Yeah. No, I'm wearing um, a beautiful Breguet. So I did buy this watch to kind of like celebrate our new relationship with Breguet. We're going to be releasing a fantastic film for them in, uh, in June, actually, end of June. It's going to be really, really beautiful. Um, anyway, this is a tradition, um, beautiful power reserve. Power reserve, in my opinion, is like the most functional uh, complication. Um, chronograph, I think I just use that sometimes just for fun. You know, not really for actual function in my life. The power reserve, I actually know when to wind the watch. And if I don't know when to wind it, it will just die without me knowing. So I do wind this watch all the time. Listen to that sound. So loud. I love it. So I think that this is, while not my most expensive watch, I suppose, my big boy watch. This is a real watchmaking watch. My Cartier Tank Centre is not a watchmaking watch. It's more of a you know, historical art piece, you know? But this I look at and I say, okay, if, if, if you can admire this, this really kind of means that you have a affinity for the art of horology, right? The actual technical aspect. So I, um, I love this watch and um, I have a couple more watches too in my pockets. No, oh, well, well. <laughs> you old dog. <laughs> the goal is very simple. To find the best watch collection in New York City. Easier said than done, of course. And also, on top of that, what defines the best watch collection? That is also to be determined. It can mean a lot of things. Sometimes it's a really rare piece. You know, sometimes it's a piece in rare condition. Even if it's a common watch, right? Sometimes it's you know, more personal. It's like a really great story associated with the watch and the way it leaves, you know, you or, or me in this instance. And I think that the best way to really understand how great someone's collection is, is to meet them, right? It's not just stats. It's not just money ball. You know, it, it, it doesn't work that way. You know, you gotta take a closer look at, uh, at how those watches came to, you know, end up in this watch roll. But the way this is going to work today is that we will see Christian, we're going to see what is on his wrist, then we're going to go to New York City, see what's on my wrist, hint, it's nothing special, but then we are meeting up with someone today that may have the best watch collection in New York City, they may not. But more importantly, it's just we're going to see a watch collection in New York City, of course. So if you think you have a watch collection that can stand up to the entire city, Email me at michael at theoandharris.com and Christian and I may come visit you. But, like I said, this is the pilot episode. This is, there's no competition to be had yet. This is just a little rainy New York day with some nice watches. Anyways, though, the quest begins. The quest to find the best watch in New Hey, so we're going to the city, just don't make us look bad. Are you kidding? I'm the king of that city. Forget about it! Forget about it! And a little decaffeinado. Oh, uh, how many? One sugar. sugar. How many is this supposed to be? Two sugars. <laughs> <laughs> That's a close one. Okay. To you, to business, eh? Yeah. To Yay. business! Ah, to business! That was a joke, by the way. I take three sugars. <laughs> <laughs> Vintage Omega. This is a really beautiful watch. I love the bevels in the case. If you really look, really beautiful wide bevels. Light patination, little like, kind of like eggshell color dial, uh, rose gold accents, really lovely. And then in the pocket, I've got a Royal Oak. This is a beautiful Royal Oak, very thin. Um, obviously it's an automatic, this isn't a quartz model, um, but uh, it has a center seconds, which is not like the original jumbos, but I think this is one of the most beautiful Royal Oaks we've, we've owned. The condition is fantastic. Um, this watch is in my personal collection at the moment. Um, that does not mean that it will never be for sale, but um, we'll see. The Royal Oak market is just, uh, I think an extremely, while popular place, I think it is an undervalued place for these mid-sized models. You know, you can get a watch like this for around $30,000, which again, is a lot of money, no doubt about that, but I think it actually represents value when you look at like the most important watches of all time. You know, and, and the Royal Oak and Patek Philippe's Nautilus, uh, you know, really you know, kind of are those watches, at least certainly right now and for the foreseeable future. So, um, so I think there's actually a lot of value in these, uh, especially with this condition.
lot of value. Quick uh, wristwatch check for me. I am wearing a G-Shock DW5600. It's, uh, I look at it more as an investment piece than a watch. <laughs> it's actually my favorite watch that I own, so I will definitely lose money on it, but at the end, it's all worth it. We are going to a bar in Manhattan called Crown Alley. Crown Alley. Crown Alley. I don't drink, I have no familiarity <laughs> with bars, but that's where we're going today. Good happy hour cocktails. Good, good happy hour cocktails. More importantly, who are we meeting? We're meeting Ryan. Ryan uh, is, is, is a watch geek. He's a member of the Theo and Harris, you know, watch community. And we've been friends on Instagram for a while. We've never met. We've talked about meeting before. Just never, you know, never pulled the trigger on it. But uh, so, so, so we're going to meet up. I'm not a huge fan of the name Ryan, but this guy seems awesome. Kill for Negroni right now. Yeah? Oh yeah. Who? <laughs> We've arrived, as Christian said, there's no one here. Not even Ryan. He's not late though. He's not, oh he's not late, no. Well it's 429. What time is he supposed to get here? It's it's 427, your G-Shock isn't oh. even accurate? No, I said this just in, Quartz is no longer accurate. What time does uh, your brigade say? 815. Oh. There he is! Oh. Hey, Yo, what's right? up dude? Ryan. Absolutely, this yep. is uh, Michael. Michael. What's up? Nice Michael, to nice to meet you man. A lot of people talk about the Swatch is like their gateway to watches. When I was a kid on vacation, my mom bought me a $50 Swatch, and um, ever since then, just kind of hooked into mechanical watches. This was not my first Rolex, or even my second. I bought myself right after I got my first job a 14060, like two line sub. I was kind of obsessed with like the next best thing and always was trying to think about like okay like what can I flip to get next um, and so I ended up selling the watch that I associated with getting my first job out of college uh, which in a way I regret but I also saw that watch to a close friend of mine so I'm happy went to a good place and so I don't really associate the state just with like any uh, event in particular but what it taught me was the value in watches of associating a watch with a certain memory or piece of sentimental value. Be content with what you have, find value in what you have. No, I will never ever flip this. Went through a lot in the past years, I'm sure most people have. Sometimes we're easier than others, sometimes they're quite difficult. But this watch was kind of there with me every single day. Even though I don't associate it with a specific event, I have a lot of memories and a lot of things I went through in the past year while I had this watch and you know, for that reason I never flipped it. This is a uh, 114060 sub that I actually just picked up yesterday. I've been out of school a couple years now and I found out last week that uh, I just got promoted and I wanted to mark the occasion with a watch. And this isn't the first sub that I had, but for me, like as far as subs go and different reference numbers go, as far as my amount value goes, like I'd like to get this watch eventually engraved. A lot of people say, oh, you know, like that kills the value of your watch, you're just defacing it, but it's like I don't ever plan on selling it. And like, I'm marking this watch with a specific occasion. And so, you know, I'll probably get the case back engraved with like my promotion date initials. Like I, I would never sell this watch, so, like who cares what somebody yeah, else thinks if I engrave it. Lose, yep. I should pay deference. You, you're taller and you have better chest hair <laughs> and I know this is like fun and you wanted me to YouTube, but you're much cooler than I am, so I'm gonna go over there and cry. Good shoot. Ryan is a great guy. Christian is, uh, you have a meeting? Holding your cards. That's Yeah, right. looking good. Look but if I'm doing your job, who's doing your job? Who's doing my job? Uh, no, Ryan was a gentleman. I'm so glad we met. Super nice guy. Uh, love uh, love his stories and loved all the things we had in common. From uh, Rolex to uh, to Belgian shoes. I don't know if you guys caught that. I don't know if I'm gonna walk aimlessly in the city for two hours or I'm gonna have paella because this place has really good paella. Guys, uh, you guys will do sign off. You guys can sign off. Yeah. But hey, thanks for watching. There he goes. No, I need, you need your car. Yeah. <laughs> Christian has another meeting in the city, so I drive the G-Wagon home. And it's, whoa, and it's great. I like to pretend that I'm Christian the entire time. And that's it, period end.